Uh, well, I'm Trevor Toms and I'm a musician based in Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm originally from Denver, Colorado. And out here in Pigeon Forge on tour right now. Uh, the start of a month long tour playing original music. We're here with um, three or four other musicians playing tonight and last night, uh, a little place here in town. And, but mostly this tour is solo, solo tour. I have been a musician my whole, my whole life. Only the last two years since I moved to Nashville, I've been doing it full time and um, I finally have made it a career, you know, successful so far. We're paying all the bills. Being a musician in Nashville is a, it's a bit of a grind. Um, depends on what you do. Right now I'm, I'm playing all the honky tonks and bars. And what that means is there's four blocks of, five blocks of bar after bar after bar, no cover charge, um, expensive beers and the musicians generally work on tips. And so I wake up five or six days a week and play the lunch hour shows. And um, I play three to four hours straight of country and rock and roll and pop covers. When you're playing these cover gigs, you get uh, family tradition and friends in low yeah. places and um, 3 a.m. by Goo Goo Dolls and, you know, I mean, these songs that everybody knows all the words to because that's, yeah. Yeah. that's what sells music. People yeah. want to sing it and feel like it's about them and they want to know all the words. So you play lots of that. But um, every once in a while, somebody asks for something crazy like Free Bird by Leonard Skinner. And on Broadway in Nashville, that's a $100 song. So if you want to hear Free Bird, there better be a hundred dollars that comes from the crowd. In Nashville, I, there are several circuits. You know, a bar will own three or four different places or two different bars. And so I play at least a dozen places down there. Uh, Tootsie's world famous Orchid Lounge. That's the one everybody's heard of. Um, I've, I have played at Roberts. I've played Layla's, Alan Jackson's Good Time Bar, Distillery. I mean, I've played almost, almost all of them. I'm going to try a song here. I'm going to try a little uh, South Side of Heaven, Ryan Bingham. Now, Ryan Bingham has become a household name because he's on Yellowstone, but he had his own successful career in his own right. This is the hardest song I know how to play. It involves all of the winds all at once. Nashville's, uh, they call it a 10 year town. And I heard that for years before I even moved out, out here. Um, but it's everybody sh who shows up has basically 10 years to, to shoot their shot, <laughs> to, to make a career out of it, make a living out of it, to either sell, sell a song as a songwriter to another artist or to become an, a performer in their own right. Um, or, get a record deal. Ideally, I would um, be able to sell one of my songs or sell the rights to a major star, like, for example, Jason Aldean. He buys all his songs from songwriters in Nashville and, and Texas. And um, so if I could sell a song, then we get what we call mailbox money. And just to wait for that check every month and for royalties, basically. The stars are everywhere in Nashville. Um, and actually, I'm writing, writing a song about that right now. We're trying to, we're trying to nuance it. This something about the stars shine brightest in Nashville. Um, but you're gonna run into. Um, and they're all based there because that's where the, the industry is. That's where all the recording studios are. That's where the major record labels are. Songwriting is an interesting process. Inspiration comes from everything. I think if you're a creative, um, you can find it in the, you know, the, the beauty of the landscape in the Tennessee Hills. 
you can find it in some hilarious story of some anecdote of something that happened in a bar one night. Um, but also a lot of that is, uh, a lot of the creativity or inspiration comes from sitting down and working to write a song. Yeah, the cover gigs are are 99% covers, but always play an original song because that might be the thing that makes a connection with you know one of the tourists, or you never know, there might be a a, um, a representative, a studio representative in the crowd, and they might hear your original song and say, and you know these are you know slim chances, but you never know, they might say, I love that, and where can I find out more, or where are you playing next, or you want to sign a record deal so i'm actually promoting uh, i'm on this tour promoting a uh, a new record called barely country it's my latest ep it's six songs and something we recorded this spring and uh, that's what i'm promoting on this tour and and i call it barely country because you talk to artists and you say well what's your genre well that's a challenging question these days now artists never want to really answer that unless it's very clear what they what they uh what they perform but americana is is basically what i what i write and sing and but americana is such a broad term now that it's hard to say well is that twangy electric guitars and songs about trucks is that more a country or is that more folk or kind of bluegrassy um, so I'm just trying to sell my music on the country as a country in the country genre because you pick a lane and go for it but really we're the album's called barely country as a as a sort of a tongue-in-cheek joke that it's not really twangy enough it's not country enough to be country so the next the next, this current step is is to be on tour in five states in the central, you know, east part of the U.S. and get my feet wet, uh, meet some people, make some connections to potentially bring a band out and tour with with a band. You make more money, play bigger yep. venues, uh, especially once you've built a following, and then take a tour to Europe and spend some time there, try to make some money, make some impressions, and uh, all this is leading towards either, you know, a record deal in my own right or selling a song to somebody else. So uh, I'm not signed to a label, so this, this record, Barely Country, is all self-funded. Um, and every, every musician, every artist always has several funding sources, right? So I have uh, a Patreon page and some people s contribute to that on a monthly basis, but uh, for each record that we put out, we have a, a party, we have a, you know, a pass the hat sort of party and, and try to get people to help fund, retroactively pay for this, this record that all came out of pocket and um, until a record deal comes along and then the studio would, you know, pay for it. But that's a long conversation about <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you my ultimate, my ultimate goal, my ultimate goal. So, and it comes with a story. When I was five or six years old, my mother took me to, uh, let's start this over. My ultimate goal, uh, starts with a story. So I grew up in Colorado and the famous venue there is Red Rocks Amphitheater and international superstars have played Red Rocks. Um, small town local Denver heroes have played Red Rocks. 
but it's this magical experience. And if you haven't seen a show there, you absolutely should buy a plane ticket, fly over, see a show. Doesn't matter who. And when I was five or six years old, my mother took me to an Easter sunrise service. And it was, there was snow on the bench seats and it was brutally cold. I didn't want to be up before dawn, but we, we get up there and we're sitting in the 50 or 60th row and you're surrounded by this red sandstone overlooking the sunrise coming up over the plains and over the city. And I remember looking down at the stage and seeing the, the, the reverend, seeing the preacher on stage and saying, I want to be there. I don't necessarily want to be the preacher, but I want to be there looking up at the crowd with the microphone. And I said, I'm going to do that one day. So my ultimate goal is to, to make it big enough to be successful enough to headline a show at Red Rocks, which would mean that I'm on a big national or international tour by then.